We're Brianna and Keeley, and you're listening to the Where We Live podcast, where we discuss all things home. You'll hear from us on residential real estate, the process of buying and selling a home, design trends, entrepreneurship, faith, and much more. In this episode, we give you the tips and tricks for efficient and effective house hunting. A common fear buyers have when entering the house hunt is that it's going to take forever. Will they ever find the right house for them? We're here to assure you that you definitely will, and it can be much more pain-free with the following tips. We have the privilege of working with buyers of all sorts, but there are some that make it easier on themselves than others. Let us guide you and make this as seamless as possible. Well, good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to talk about the house hunt today. Um, I don't know that we've talked about this before, but there's a lot that you can do to prepare this for your house hunt. This is something that we could have easily have a full hour long episode, which we don't normally do hour long episodes. And this isn't, we're not planning to have an hour long <laughs> episode, just telling don't you. Be, don't be scared. Yeah, yeah. Just telling you that we absolutely could. We have so much to say. Some of these bits, bits and pieces of what we're about to say, we've shared in other episodes. But I think this is our first comprehensive, all right, let's get to work. This is what you need to know. Let's go. So our goal with this episode is... Um, that the house hunt wouldn't feel overwhelming to you, Mm -hmm. that you would not feel fatigued, that you're not kind of self-sabotaging in a lot of these ways. There are a lot of things that you can do to make sure that your house hunt goes better than other people's. (laughs) And so um, we just want to get into those details today. Yep. So number one is get your finances in order. Have we beat this drum enough? (laughs) We're beating it again. Yes. Get your finances in order. The first step of that is getting pre-approved. This is an absolute must. We're not going to go out and look at houses before we're pre-approved. It will sabotage you. Yeah. Why, Keely? Why is it you all? What do you, what's your what's the phrase you always say? I always say people <laughs> like houses that are more expensive than what they can afford. Always. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a multimillionaire. More money should buy you more house, period. And so we uh, we refuse to show people houses that they um, don't know if they're pre-approved for yeah. or not. And so it will do you no good. It, it really doesn't because it just sets you up for failure. You're dreaming about that other house. Then you start doing the spiral of can I stretch to get that other house? We don't want you to be house poor. I want you to be comfortable living in your house. You can buy a couch and still go on a vacation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that is really important to us. Mm -hmm. So find a lender that you like, that you trust, that is responsive. The rates generally should be about the same. So if you like, trust them, like them and trust them and they're responsive, work with them to get pre-approved so that we can move forward in the house hunt with a little bit more confidence that we're looking in the right places. Yes. And when you actually find a home that you love, you're going to need to know which lender you're going to go with. Mm -hmm. So doing your prep prep work up front is important. Uh, Know your budget and and really what kind of house that means for your market and for your current market, depending on the market conditions today. So um, we're in a very competitive seller's market. So buyers are tripping over themselves to try to buy houses. So for us, we recommend right now looking a bit under the top of your budget. Mm -hmm. In some areas where it's hyper competitive, maybe significantly more than Mm -hmm. the top of your budget so that you have room to really win in bidding wars. If you're Mm -hmm. today's market, if you're looking at a house that's exactly the top of your budget, I mean, you're like, to have a broken heart because um, you just don't have any flex room and or you end up in the situation that we just talked about where you're buying more house than you want to and we don't want that for you. Okay, I've got a great way to explain this. Yes. We, we always say leave room to flex. What we mean is, okay, if you have a really tight shirt on, there's no room to flex. You're going like to rip it. your shirt. I it's like going it. to rip. If you have, if your shirt is loose, there's room for you to flex and show off your muscles. It, say, what we mean is if you are looking under budget at far enough, there's room for you to flex up, show your strength as a, a financially strong buyer, and win that house. If you are too close to the very top of your budget, you don't have room to flex and, and show your strength and it's going to be a lot harder for you to win that house. I like it. I like it. (laughs) It also means that you need to understand the other costs associated with buying a home because it's not just what you're taking your mortgage out for. Um, You need to know if you're financially ready. We have a whole nother episode on that. Go back and and listen to any of the ones that really involve budgets, lenders, money. We cover this a lot because we want you to be prepared. Okay. So once we have our finances in order and we're sure of what we can afford, what price point we should be looking at so that we can flex. 
it's very important that we understand and know what our ideal house even looks like. What, what are the deal breakers, okay? So we're never gonna find the perfect house. Not every single thing is gonna be exactly what you wanted and expected. Even if you have a mon monstrous budget, there's just not a house out there that has everything that's exactly like you wanted it to be. So you need to be flexible um, on what is and is not an essential item. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of this you are going to learn over the course of the house hunt, but the majority of this you can really understand up front. If you have a partner or somebody else that's going to be a key decision maker in your process, you need to have a lot of conversations up front. Yes. Um, I, I highly recommend writing it down. When David and I were looking for a home, we had our musts, so like things that a house had to have and then things that were nice to have in a house. And genuinely, we had two houses that we were considering. We went and sat at Mi Casino over some Mambo taxis and looked hey, which house has our must, but then how many of the nice-to-have features did it have? Um, mm -hmm. And that helped make it abundantly clear which house that we should buy. And so you've got to understand what is going to be um, just essential for you to enjoy living in your home. Mm -hmm. um, is not having your, a garage really just going to be a pain point for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you know? And you'd rather have, you know, older kitchen cabinets and be able to buy a garage. You know, mm -hmm. what are the trade-offs that are going to be key? Do you have to have that fence already for your dog? Or are you willing to, to have the cash and put it in afterwards? Like, you've got to understand what are the deal breakers. Yep. Yep. You also need to be familiar with the area and the location maybe specific neighborhoods of where you are planning to purchase. It is of no service to anybody for to go out on showing appointments and decide you didn't like the neighborhood before you even get up to the house. It mm -hmm. just it does no good to you or us or anybody or the or the sellers that had to leave their home. Um, so we really encourage you to drive around and get very familiar. It, like walk the sidewalks, mm -hmm. do your school research if that's applicable. If you've got kids, play in the play in the playgrounds, meet some neighbors. Like just get as familiar as you can. Before before is only going to help you be more confident and ready to pull your trigger sooner. Yes, because we can't change where the house is located. Yeah. And unfortunately, and we see this time and time again, people find a house they love in a neighborhood that they didn't know they hated. <laughs> and um, it's less expensive than the same house would be in a neighborhood that they loved mm -hmm. because that's just the general consensus, right? A great neighborhood with a great house is going to be more expensive than a great house in a neighborhood that's less desirable. Mm -hmm. And so this sets you up for heartbreak because you you see this house and maybe it's like very new and fully kitted out and all that stuff but it's because you know it's right next to the city dump and so the same house is going to be a couple hundred thousand more in a different neighborhood and so you've got to understand what your budget is going to buy you in the area that you want to be it's also really frustrating just from us on the sell side when you get feedback as a seller from buyers of like they just don't like the neighborhood or they just don't like the schools like that's one of those things that you just can't change. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, please don't waste their time being displaced from their home. Be intentional about what homes that you want to see. Yep. Yep. Okay. So another factor in all of this is your timeline and what timeline are you comfortable with? If you are currently in a lease, okay, are we going to try to line this up with when your lease ends? If so, not everybody knows what date their lease ends. <laughs> figure, That's true. Figure out when it ends. But, but also, when you're figuring out when it ends, figure out what it would take to break your lease. Um, because it, we see so many people that make the decision that it's totally worth them breaking their lease to get into the house when they want to. Um, I think usually in Texas, breaking the lease is, is equivalent to two months of rent. That is not across the board, so you need to make sure what yours is. But I think that's what we see most common. And so if somebody wants to buy a house four months or five months before their lease ends, financially it makes sense for them to, to pay to break that lease. Um, so that's something that you need to know and understand and, and know also on the flip side of, of what's too early for you to move. What's too late? What's your must move by date? Are we gonna gonna push it up to the line to right? Like we have to find a house this week, otherwise you're gonna be homeless. And what if we don't? Do you have a backup plan? Make a backup plan now, right? Find some 
friends or family that'll let you move in with them temporarily or an Airbnb. There are options. But if you're in a lease and you're in a very competitive buying position, meaning you are competing, <laughs> mm-hmm. then we definitely recommend having that backup plan because it's going to, it will reduce some stress. Absolutely. Along the way. Yeah. And you need to get with your realtor. The, I mean, we're amazing partners in, in figuring this out. Like what is a reasonable timeline for mm-hmm. what you're looking for? Um, again, doing this kind of prep work up front, being more narrowed in on these are the kinds of schools that we want to be in. This is the budget that we want to be in. These are the kind of homes that we like. It can help us give you a reasonable expectation of, okay, this is how long I think it might take to get one of those under contract, um, depending on how aggressive you're, de- you're willing to be. The general rule of thumb is the pickier and the more unwilling you're going to be to like be flexible or be aggressive in an offer, the longer this is going to take. That's just how it is. Um, if you if there are more homes that kind of fit your criteria and you're willing to take your realtor's advice and, and do what it takes to win those homes, it's going to be faster. Mm-hmm. Those are just going to be facts of it. But there are going to be things that we can't control, mm-hmm. right? Like if you, to your point, need a house this week, but you're not willing to do what it takes to get the house this week, you know, put a really aggressive offer in and, and be pretty flexible probably on what you're looking for, then that timeline's not going to be reasonable. So you have to have those c- candid conversations with your realtor. Mm-hmm. If you want to be the pickiest of the picky, okay, fine, but we need to have a lot of time to mm-hmm. be able to find that right house because it just may not come. Yep. Okay. So, so we've walked through getting your finances in order, making sure you know what you want in a house, making sure you know the location of where that house is going to be, what your timeline is. We put with those puzzle pieces together, you really need to understand what that that you can afford the house that you want in the location that you want. Yes, okay. So how do we do this? Scroll online apps, right? Like date the houses. <laughs> Look on Zillow or Realtor dot com or whatever app you you prefer, and and look and see, right? That's going to tell you. I don't like any of these houses in my budget. Well, then, then maybe we do need to look at some other neighborhoods because the neighborhood is going to change before the budget's going to change, most likely. Um, or if you th- you're thinking you do like them, okay, great. I'm glad you like them on your phone, but you need to go date them in person. Go to an open houses because some houses um, will look really, really great in photos. But in person, they'll look a little different. So I, there's a reason we keep using the dating analogy here. <laughs> yeah. So go, go open houses are your friend. This is your homework. Go see these houses in person. It will help you get your senses and feel. And, and it's, I mean, it's an open house. So you won't feel like you're wasting anybody's time. This is like your fun weekend activity. Just get out there and do it. And, um, and, know, and it will help you see firsthand and understand, you know, that different areas and locations are, are just going to vary drastically on prices for what what like as far as the finish outs appears to be maybe pretty much the same house it's going to be a very different price in different locations and it's going to help you see and understand that absolutely once you feel like you really have a good grasp on that, you've got kind of a reasonable expectation of what kind of house you can get for your budget, and that's really going to help you make a decision, which is going to decrease the amount of fatigue you feel from the from the buying process. You need to come up with a showing plan. So when is going to be a good time for you, your realtor, and your spouse or the other key decision makers schedule to be able to go out and see houses? How quickly you're going to need to go really depends on the market. Um, but keep in mind, no matter what the market there's no guarantee that a house is going to be on the market tomorrow. Um, That's just how real estate is. I always say if I had a crystal ball, I would tell you when this house is going to go under contract, but I just can't make any guarantees. And it happens time and time again where someone says, oh yeah, it's definitely not going to be, the selling agent says, oh, it's not going to be under contract by tomorrow, you know, and then it goes under contract today and we have broken hearts. And mm-hmm. so it it is wise to see it as soon as you can. It's best to see it during the day and avoid the crowds if possible. A lot of people are then gone for work and things like that. Um, so come up with that showing plan. When are you going to be out showing? How quickly can you kind of turn around and get those things done? And And let's touch one more time we mentioned this earlier in the episode, but remember, you're dis- most likely you're displacing somebody from their home. Um, so we do really recommend to be very intentional with the houses that you want to see. Okay, we don't recommend seeing ten houses at once unless unless you're coming in from out of state. Then we're going to do what we need to do with the time that we have available. Mm-hmm. But it's 
we don't recommend 10 at once. There probably aren't 10 that actually fit all of the criteria that we just talked about, especially not in today's market where we don't have enough houses. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we're displacing people out of their homes. So let's be intentional with that. Um, and thirdly, you're not going to remember. 10 houses yes. is overwhelming. We really recommend no more than six. And, and I think six might be pushing it a little bit unless there's some throwaway ones in there. Um, it's going to be very difficult for you to remember the details and compare. So focus on on the ones that check the most boxes and, and let's go see those. Yeah, we don't want you to not buy a house because you're hangry. Um, one of my yeah. good friends, we got to, I got to go house hunting with them out of state. And so we were just the other the other friend that came with them. And he says that he only bought his house because I gave him a granola bar before. Like he was about done, right? He was just like hating every house that we were in. And he's like, Keely, you fed me. And that was the reason that we bought our house. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just the realities of it, right? It, it can be exhausting. It's a lot to take in. It's an emotional decision. And we want you to be really, really well prepared. Prepared. That granola bar was a good investment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, and you. so you've also got to know what writing a successful offer looks like. If you're not getting the vibe, preparation for the house hunt is really, really important because, especially in today's market, decisions are having to be made really, really quickly. And so your realtor is going to help you with this. What are the terms that are winning deals in this market? Mm -hmm. um, if you're really concerned about all kind of the details of the contract, let's read the contract beforehand so mm -hmm. we're not having to go over that for six hours the night we're trying to make an offer. When will we need to submit the offer? So in this market, we need to do it ASAP or by a deadline that they set out. Mm -hmm. And so we may not have the luxury of time. And so you really need to get, wrap your head around, what am I going to need to put in my offer to be successful? And we're going to give you general recommendations. Each one is going to be very unique, but there are going to be some kind of broad strokes based on the market that you're going to need to do. And last but not least, we want you to be educated. I think pretty much everything we just talked about was, was saying, hey, be educated about this, be educated about that. Yeah. But but we want you to be educated about the process as a whole, um, not not because because we feel like, well, we don't want to do part of our job. Actually, actually absolute opposite of that. We we take it on our, as ourselves to make sure that you know and understand everything that's going to happen between now and you getting your keys um, because there are a lot of things happening things happen fast um, decisions are made and it can be very stressful and overwhelming if you don't know what's coming at you so we want to make sure you know and understand that ahead of time um, option period is the first section of of time after we get under contract it's very very busy okay so if you don't know what that what the option period is go listen to episode 46 but we walk all of our clients through home buying 101 and this is to help you understand exactly what we just said help you understand the whole process from start to finish reminding you that there's no pop quiz okay we're going to be with you holding your hand throughout everything but if you have questions we want to answer those now and we want you to see and understand big picture what's about to happen okay um so that you are not surprised Absolutely. So everything that we just talked about could result in two very, very different buyers. Okay. So, um, and we've seen both of these a lot. Okay. We love you all. Don't worry. But, um, you know, we've seen the, the buyer that, that makes it harder on themselves where they're completely unprepared. We spend weeks looking at homes that maybe they can't afford or in areas that they don't like and have to go back to the complete drawing board. By that time, you're already fatigued and frustrated and it's not exciting to see homes anymore. You wonder if you're ever going to find what you're looking for. Right. Um, and people that are just really confused or you get halfway through the house hunt and realize you don't have enough money to do this. That is so disappointing mm -hmm. and really, really frustrating mm -hmm. versus the buyer that has, has spent the time up front, knows what neighborhoods they want to be in, knows what kind of house they're looking for, is able to then make a quick decision and get the house that they really were looking for. And, and I see a lot of those buyers then not have any they don't second guess it at all. They're not wondering if that was the wrong one. They've done the preparation. They know kind of what the market landscape looks like, and they feel confident that they got a good product for their price in the market. And so that is what we want from you, for you. We want to reduce the fatigue, reduce the strain. Buying a house is extremely emotional, but there's a lot that you can do to protect yourself there. Mm -hmm. Our job is to make sure your home buying experience is as seamless as it can be. Today's episode is probably one of the most important episodes we've recorded to prepare you well to find your dream home. 
listen to us. Buying a home has enough potential pitfalls. So do your homework, prepare, and make this easier on yourself. We're, we're rooting for you. If you want our house hunting prep checklist, visit wherewelivepodcast.com to download that for free. That wraps up another episode of the Where We Live podcast. We want to hear which topics interest you most for our upcoming shows. Head on over to wherewelivepodcast.com to continue the conversation in our Facebook group, read our blog, and connect with us. Thanks for tuning in.